Hey, Alex. What is it, Tad? I fucking hate Darkest Dungeon. Ooh. Okay, so Darkest Dungeon, uh, it was an early, I, I guess, early Kickstarter game? It, it was a Kickstarter game. Yeah. I think it came... I I was looking on Steam to double-check before this episode, and it said it came out in 2016, but I feel like that's wrong. I feel like Darkest Dungeon came out in, like, 2013. It was 2016, January of 2016, so right at the start. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was like it was like January 16th or some shit. 19th. So, God, Dad. Get it right. It was a Kickstarter game that's whole gimmick was... It's anti-fun. You're an adventuring party, and you're going into these things, but you're also managing your stress because these are fucking crazy dark dungeons. It's like, oh shit... You know, you actually think about it. Yeah, like going through these muddy places, thorns, fucked up elder shit. That would be kind of hard for whoever's adventuring down there. And that was the selling point. You know, that and it had a good art style and it had a really nice trailer. You know, those are the things you need for a Kickstarter. And then uh, it was, you know, development, blah, 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 blah. And it finally came out. And I was, I always had my eye on it. But I never, like, sprang for it because it was never under like fifteen dollars, and then this summer sale, which just ended a few days ago, like a week ago or so, when this episode comes out, uh, I bought it for like seven bucks, and I'm like, oh hell yeah, let's do this! And then uh, it took about four <laughs> days for me to uninstall the game. <laughs> okay, so I have a little story about this game because I was actually kind of keeping my eye on this thing when it was still a Kickstarter. So please, allow me to take my little turn here. So, years ago, my stupid friend Alba, you know, the one who was in TNA, and I'm calling him out, fucking, uh... Yeah, TNA, uh, by the way, uh, episode 37 of TNA is gonna come out next week. Uh, I know that's been, like, the hit thing on our pod, on our, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, every day there's, like, f- like, a million fucking downloads of that shit. It's crazy. Anyway, uh, this dumbass... First found this Kickstarter, and he comes to me, he's like, holy shit, this game looks awesome. Because he likes the Cthulhu Mythos and shit, too, and, like, everyone does. It's fucking awesome, right? And I look at this game, and I read through the thing, because I'm like, hey, this, this looks pretty cool. Because, like, the art style looked pretty cool. I watched the trailer, and uh, I listened to the, the narrator. <clears throat> Was he out at the time? I don't know. I just remember seeing the game. Yeah. And as soon as I saw them move, like, the little, like, tweeny animation of them, like, walking, I'm like, I told him straight to his face, this game looks like shit. I told him right there that this game <laughs> looks like hot garbage. This game looks like something off of Newgrounds. I want the I want you to kill yourself. He said, you can't judge a game this early when it's still barely a Kickstarter. And I said, you know what? He's actually a little bit right. They might make that look better, and that's just a placeholder animation for now. Because placeholder animations are a thing. I mean, in Heroes of New Earth, when they were creating Gunblade, his placeholder model was Batman, and he threw batarangs <laughs> instead of shooting bullets. Like, they just fuck around for that his ultimate was he drove his batmobile into you like it was just a shit post while they were like actually designing a real character so i'm like all right you know what fair enough but because i read through the gameplay like what they want to do and he talking about like how this is stress meter the rng all this because they, they were they were very transparent about it and i said okay but i'm gonna be real with you this game sounds bad this sounds like it's gonna be the complete opposite of fun this sounds especially from you the least uh, the game that I want you of all people to play the least. This is an awful sounding game from a design standpoint. I am not looking forward to this whatsoever. I didn't back it. However, when it came out for its early access, I did pay the full twenty dollars for it. I played the game for six hours. I gave it a lot of fair chances to try to woo me over, and it <laughs> failed in every single way. So I have a list. Hear that? Hear a little little I've little, got little, 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 little list. So, right off the, off the bat, and Ted can probably agree with me, because I'm very adamant about how much I hate this game. Because, Okay, well, hold me, on, Alex. Before what? we get into the bad parts of the game, let's go over the good parts. Well, that's what I was going to do. I just, wanted to, I, just, I just wanted to quickly say why like, this is a personal thing. I gave the game twice as much time as you. I got 13 and a half hours. Yeah, but here's the thing, Tad. Because for both people that played this game, I was right. And neither of them listen to me, especially you. You're like, oh, Alex, you're just bad and don't understand the mechanics. <laughs> Next, to, literally eight hours later, so I fucking uninstalled the game and this game is shit. 
Hmm. You know, Tad, you really made me think with that one. I just want everyone to know that Tad's stupid and wrong and this game's bad and everyone who plays it and defends it's an idiot. Okay, so the good things about this game, the narrator, no one is going to say that narrator's bad. And I'm almost certain he took up 80% of that budget because that motherfucker is way too good for this game. Yeah, the narrator has a very good presence about him because... The, the the premise of the game is that your ancestor has owned this 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 house, and he started getting into some real skeevy shit. And like the intro of the game is him writing a letter to you, and then he blows his fucking brains out. And then like you like as you're going around, like he's the, he becomes the narrator of all the stuff. Like you'll get hit by a crit, dazed, reeling, about to break, a dizzying blow. These monsters can be fought. They can be beaten. Like that that one and the one where he's like. Many fall to the darkness, but not this one. Not today. And it's like, oh, fuck yeah, let's do this. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you fucking slam your fist on the table and hell yeah. Feels good. Mortality clarified in a single strike. Yeah, it's good shit like that. That, every single thing the narrator does is fantastic. They've got really, really powerful, like, lines to go along with everything. He's incredibly well written. I will say I disagree with you on the art style. I'm 100% okay with the way that they kind of tween the animations and walk around and all that. I'm okay with that. The the, the majority of the game is like you have, you know, you have your simple characters and then they got like kind of like Paper Mario style like moving where they just kind of like move their limbs and they're all flat and shit. I thought it looked okay. I thought it looked pretty good. It fit for the game because it's like the game is in like a diorama. Like there's like you go between rooms and, like, in the rooms, you just interact with every now and then. There'll be something in the background you can interact. They're not, like, fully explorable dungeon environments. You literally walk down a hallway and go to the next room. And then you can choose to interact with the things. Or your fucking jester is a kleptomaniac and steals, uh, steals like, a bunch of super good trinkets and shit from the chest because he's a fucking asshole. See, my problem with the art style is it looks really good in stills. It has this fucking, like, dark comic book-looking kind of... Graphic novel, I guess is a good way to say it. Art style to it. It looks really good. But I fucking think the walking animation when they are going through the uh, the dungeons is the shittiest-looking thing I've seen. I've seen shit on Newgrounds look better than, that, than a fully-funded Kickstarter game. I have seen motherfuckers, for free, animate a bunch of shit in a week that looks better than that tweened garbage. It's the fact that they just raise their legs up and down like a fucking children's cartoon, and it looks so bad. <laughs> and it's legitimately just the walk. That walk walk it kills me inside when i see a you stream a, a video I walk, I when i played it time to talk. Ev- yeah literally every time i see it i'm like wow this looks so bad this is awful oh, why does anyone like this part did no one comment on how bad this looks and it's just that like in battle like how they do that they have like the little like stand animations that looks fine when they do like the swing and how like it like imposes to like an actual picture of them like hitting them that looks fine it's legitimately that walk kills a lot of the animation style to me and i hate it <laughs> so much but anyway, when they're not walking, the art looks really good. Now, the wrong. Everything else. Hold on. I have some things. I have, so, uh, I have some more things the game did right. Because I think I still liked the game at least longer than you did. <laughs> oh, what an accomplishment. So, okay. One of the things. So it's a game that appeals to a very, very small niche. And what that niche is, is the entire game is it a, it's, a, it's about managing your party uh, going through seeing every single possible advantage you can give yourself. The game is laden with RNG, with random stuff. There's there's dice rolls for everything, and the gameplay is minimizing the risk to your party as much as possible. And doing that, like, the game does a pretty good job of, like, making... All right, so, you know, you're going through the thing, all your dudes are getting stressed out because, like, oh, you know, that fish man just fucking gutted you and then you get really stressed out because oh shit he broke through my guard i could have died you know that's what the crit mechanic when you get hit by a crit everyone gets stressed out or when you're walking in the pitch blackness everyone gets stressed out when your fucking jester starts laughing maniacally everyone gets stressed out when your jester starts stabbing the only healer and kills them everyone gets stressed out when you refuse to play the game without a jester like i did everyone gets stressed out because i let him be abusive because he had way funnier voice lines but anyway 
the game like act was actually like when I were, when I was playing it, I was actually like super stressed out and like really immersed in it. Like, oh fuck, oh shit. Like I had to make decisions. I had to like look through this. I had to make okay. Should I like I, I had to get in there and really really think about what I was doing. It was really stressful and that was fun because it was a lot of hard work and quick decisions that I had to make. Um. Oh, there was a uh, another really fun thing they did is that. Just like with the with the game, like you know, I'm stressed while I'm playing this game, and all the characters are stressed. That immersion stuff. They had some fun classes. Uh, two of them come to mind. That uh, with like their character's personality and how it works into the gameplay. Like the jester was this dude. His gimmick was uh, he was like a stress reliever, or you could like everyone had like two different roles they could play and their abilities because they have eight abilities you can choose. Uh, and one of the thing, one of the roles for the jester is that he just sits in the back row because there's four slots for you and the enemy and that's where just characters stand you know certain attacks can hit like you know everyone has attacks like the jester has an attack that he can only use if he's in the very very front you know he has moves that can only hit when he's in the back that it's he can position use like, it's whatever yeah it's all about positioning and what the jester does is he sits in the back and he strums his little loot dun, 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 and then everyone gets like a speed boost they get like a speed boost and an accuracy boost and stuff like that and then each one of his abilities builds it increases the damage of his finale by like 20%, 50%, 40%. What you do is you just keep doing that, and then, like, on the final turn, he has a move called, like, I, f- I forget what it is, but it's literally, like, a power slide. Like, he gets down on his knees and, like, makes all the opponents lose accuracy and then goes to the very front. Next turn, he does the finale and fucking destroys someone for a fuckload of damage. And it's awesome, because it works with how the Jester works. So he's bouncing all over the... Bouncing all over the place, goes in there, gets one really, really huge fuck you shot off, and then bounces back to the end of the line again. Or the Abomination. The Abomination is a dude that has, uh, he's the only one that you can't change his abilities, because he has four when he's a human, and he has four when he's a monster. So what he does is he, uh, when he's a human, he plays a support role. He's got a chain that he can use from the middle of the group to stun someone or puke and, like, poison them, or he could atone. Which is he gets down on his knees and then he gets uh, minus he gets minus stress and he gets minus health he gets uh, additional health and then you can transform and he goes ape shit and he turns like a big goat demon and it stresses everyone else the fuck out and he goes ape shit you know you slice people with your claws you bash them with your head you do shit like that and how that kind of works into the gameplay is you do that and then like you become the tank for that thing you know you go in there you smash things with your claws and then you become the tank and then the next few turns to make up for all the uh, stress that he gained up. He atones for his sins, and then you just do, like, you use the atone skill for the next few battles to get him back up, and then he does it again. And it works into how the character is, like, designed and written and stuff. Because all the characters have, um, this is another thing that they, did, that they did really well. All the characters have backstories. And you'll never see the backstories normally, because they're like mercenaries. You hire them, and then you go into the dungeon. But, like, when when they become irrational, you know, like, uh... Like, one of the voice lines for the Plague Doctor is, like, I'll show all them, all the, you know, professors at the college that I'm not wrong. You know, you get little snippets of their history when they're, like, stressed the fuck out. Or irrational or abusive and shit like that. Oh, and also they had really funny team names sometimes. That's all that they, that's everything this game did right. They had, that's it. That's the list. Ooh, see, this is where we're gonna conflict a little bit here. See, I think they handle the characters really shittily because they're literally meaningless to me. He, he, I wrote this in big letters in, in the list of wrong things. I called it ants. See, these guys aren't party members. They're not people to me. They are ants. Because if my leper, if if Sir uh, Skin falls off, the leper dies. Oh, like oh well, that sucks. I'll go get another le- uh, leper. Name him like Lumpy or something. Give him the same <laughs> skills, and oh look, he's back. If my Hellion dies, I'll get a new one. She'll have like red hair instead of brown hair, and that's it. And it's all the same skills, and that's it. Doesn't matter. Like, if Tickles the Jester dies, I'll just go buy <laughs> Chuckles the Jester instead. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care if Reynald or Dismas die, because I'll go get another Reynald or Dismas. You know? Like, these guys, you throw them in, they level up, or they die, and then when that's over, you just get some more. You, and you get the... Kind of like an XCOM, you can name them funny names, and you can kind of bond with them based on like how they perform and like their nicknames and shit like that. But in the end of the day, when they die, they're, they're dead, they're expendable. 
and that's kind of what they want to be. But my problem is, is that the game very, uh, the game fails very hard to engage me in what's going on because I keep asking myself as I was playing it, or I kept asking myself as I was playing it, why should I care about anything that's going on? I don't care about my family member, obviously, because he's just he's just the narrator. He's just there. Outside of him sounding really cool, I have no like actual reason to care. I don't yeah. care about my party because they're ants. They exist solely to go out and get me more gold so I can power up my ants so I can get more ants. The repetitive <laughs> nature of the gameplay and the ant system makes me care even less. Because what happens is it becomes a system where it's like, okay, I'll send my four ants out, my, my four warrior ants out to go get a bunch of gold and relics so I can power up my new, my newly uh, hatched fucking larva ants so they can become warriors too. So I'll send out those four over here, then send out these four weaker guys over here, play the dungeons, you know, the, the, the same four dungeons I've been doing for the past three hours. Okay, the warrior ants are all powered up, and the weaker ants, oh wait, one died. Okay, hold up, let me go get another ant, because I can't send yeah. the stronger ants. To, I can't send the stronger ants to help the weaker ones because when you get to the higher level dungeons, they're like, pshaw, that's too weak for me. You can send a weaker one to a stronger dungeon, but he's just going to die. It's just a waste of your time. It's not going to work. So you're thinking, wow, he do-. it's like, wow, you mean to tell me he's not, the game of designers are not allowing you to actually work around this horrible grind? Yeah, they aren't. So your power, and when, when they die, they lose all those trinkets that you may, may or may not have gotten them to power them up. Some of them are shit, but some of them are good. But sometimes you want to not even use trinkets at all because it, when you die, you lose them anyway, and you're going to fucking lose your guys. That's the name of the game. There was one thing, I don't know if you ever had it happen, because I don't know if you played long enough, but... um. They, you can get those trinkets back. I don't know if you had this event happen, but uh, there's y- you aren't able to get them for a very long time. But um, at some point, and I thought this was really clever. Uh, there's like sightings of this crow that has been seen like looting corpses, and you can go to its nest and fight it and do like a boss fight and get like eight of your past trinkets back. Because you just get them well, from its that's nest. That's nice, I guess. There's something there. They mu- that's just like a fun little like oh shit. Okay, this crow landed. He's been looting the corpses of everyone that I've been playing with. Let me go get those back. All right, all right. But, all right. So that's one of the flaws written off. However, okay. the others still stand. The ant system is still a problem. I have a lot to say about that fucking grind. And I'm almost there, trust me. Because I'm going to do some spo- spoiler warning, because I know how the, f- the the game goes. And trust me, let me talk about the Darkest Dungeon itself, because you thought you know about the grind. Ted, you don't have any idea what you're about to talk about. I do. <laughs> okay, so I dislike the repetitive nature of the game, because you go through the same three fucking looking dungeons with the same three objectives. Explore all the rooms, kill all the dudes, or kill one dude in particular. That's it. So you do this over and over, get your ants powered up, lose an ant, get a new ant, power him up slowly, blah blah blah, get chuckles, get tickles, get everyone in the fucking group, all set up. Then, after doing all of this shit over and over, you fight bosses. Now Ted has a video about him fucking up a boss. You better put that in the description. Yeah, I fucking streamed this game while I was playing mm-hmm. it, and I got to the, the second boss, or the third boss I fought just made me uninstall the game, because it was fucking terrible. Okay, so I watched this, and as a uh, you know, six-hour professional who, who spent more time researching and bitching about the game than actually playing it, I know exactly what Tad did wrong. He tried to use the boss mechanics. What a stupid dum-dum. Ted, this is Darkest Dungeon. Are you implying that there's a video game behind any of this that isn't just pointing and clicking on Newgrounds Flash? Did you actually think with your head that there was any gameplay behind this game? Because there isn't. So what a here's fool what, I was. He, yeah, so here's the thing. Ted, Ted was fighting the witch, everyone's favorite fucking boss, the one who puts you in the fucking cauldron. Now, I saw people on release bitch up and down the hallway about how bad she was and how everyone figured out how to fight her. So her mechanic is she puts you in the pot. She puts whoever's in the front of the party into the pot and they take a shitload of damage. So when you hit the pot enough, they'll fall out. However, okay, when there's someone in the pot, she cannot put another person in the pot. She can only put one in there at a time. But if you take them out of the pot, her ability is now off cooldown and she can put another person in the pot, a.k.a the person in front again so if you break the first person out of the pot she's just gonna put the first person back into the pot the first turn she gets so it's completely redundant to ever hit them out of the pot she does very little damage as you can see in tad's video so what you're supposed to do is uh, before the boss like door put whoever you don't give a shit about in the front of your party 
whoever you could actually care less about, that level one guy, or maybe put the guy with the most health so he can last the longest in the pot, which, you know, whatever idea you want, but, like, poor Tickles the Jester, throw him into the pot while you have, like, Bumpy the Leper and Bitch Tits the Hellion and, uh, literally uh, did nothing wrong with the Plague Doctor, all do DPS to the fucking stupid hag and kill her while you just ignore the boss mechanics, because when you when she puts him in the pot, the pot's fully healed and you never have enough time to actually kill the whole pot because they're going to fall out and then just, she's going to put him back in and it'll heal again. You just ignore the mechanic and hit the boss as hard as possible, and that's the mechanic behind every single boss, because none of them are really well designed. Every mechanic is target X player, fuck uh, target X uh, party member, fuck them over, the end, and you just say, alright, well he's dead, and you just keep going. It's much like uh, acting in a stage play, the show must go on. That's how it is fighting a boss fight. <laughs> See, like, oh here's well, how, here's how I went over the witch boss fight. So I go in there, and here's how it's set up. There's a big ass witch. She's in the she's in slots three and four, way in the back of the enemy side. And then the first two are a cauldron. I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm gonna have to hit this cauldron, you know, break it, you know, uh, do whatever. Okay. So she puts my leper in there first turn. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Let me get him out of here. All right, I'm gonna take my hellion. Bam! I'm gonna hit this pot. Oh, I did two damage. Oh, hold on a second, Lee. Let me look at these stats here. Okay, so it's got 14 health when there's someone in there. All right, and um, let me take a closer look here. It's got it only takes 15% damage. It has 200% resistance against stun, bleeding, blight, and moving, which are literally the only things you can do to get around protection. Okay, I understand. I have to lower their protection on it. Okay, let me hit it with a lower protection spell. Oh, okay, it uh, it went back anyway, and it's back to full health. Okay, 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 okay. I get this. So I literally okay. So I. You know, my help, my uh, leper is literally useless because he can only hit the first two characters. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I had any way to know that this character would be completely unusable against this boss. Uh, that's cool. Uh, the game definitely had some way that I could have figured that out before I got to this boss. Uh, all right, okay, okay. All right, here, well, let's use my Hellion. You know, she's got a reach. I can bam, hit her with the bleed. Blam, blam. Okay, Hellion's in the pot, so she's going to die because I can't kill the pot to get her out of it. Okay, I will deal one damage, two damage, one damage, two damage, as she slowly eats all my dudes, and I this is literally impossible to win, because I didn't I tried to do the boss mechanics of saving my only characters that were damage healers. And this this is why I uninstalled the game. It's the same issue I had with Don't Starve. Don't Starve, I stopped playing, because Don't Starve, you play the game. And then you hit something that makes you die because you you aren't running the game at maximum efficiency. And so, okay, the only way I could have beaten this boss was if I knew beforehand that I can't have characters that deal damage to the first two slots. I have to have, like, two or three characters that just hit in the background. And I did have that, kind of. I uh, I had an Antiquarian who was literally useless because it's a garbage class, but she can reduce protection on characters. And, like... I had a Hellion who had a really long reach, the Leper, and then I had uh, the Occultist who could, like, heal a fuckload and, like, like, hurt people and stuff way in the back. And then she just kills, like, there was, it was unwinnable because those characters that hit in the back only do a little bit of damage and she had, like, fucking 96 HP. I lost because I did not Google every... If I have to Google, if I have to use a third-party resource for any part of your game, it's fucking garbage. Like, even with Dark Souls, the only time... Okay, so I had something... This is kind of like what happened with Dark Souls. Alright, so... In Dark Souls, there's a boss called Capra Demon. And it's not an actual boss. It's a puzzle. Just like how this one is. Okay, let me explain. So Capra Demon in Dark Souls is a puzzle boss. You walk up, you see in the room, you're like, okay. I walked forward and immediately got fucked six ways from Sunday. I'm, I have to figure out what, because like you go in there, you know, the first three times you run forward and then you get ass raped by two wolves and then Capra Demon kills you. Like, okay, okay, okay. Let me take a step back. All right, let me try the seal. Let me try and go for these wolves. Okay, that's not going to work. All right, I'm going to have to, tr- I have to figure out in the four seconds I have before this boss fucking murders me and the four second vision I have of this puzzle, I have to solve it, which is awful. Fucking... Because here's how Capra Demon works. Uh, uh, which you're uh, supposed looks to like do. someone's level 10 and just played Dark Souls and doesn't know how to beat Capra Demon, everybody. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing Ooh. about Capra Demon. Like, I eventually beat it, yeah, but, like, 
it's and you go in and you have so little time to react to anything that you're immediately fucked and you don't even yeah, know what happened because you go you in there and you're immediately maybe killed. when you died you can just remember what you did wrong and apply it to the next part as opposed to oh wait you can only solve it in the four seconds did you maybe try thinking about that puzzle on your way back you literally have four seconds to figure out what happened because as soon as you enter the thing, the dogs and chase after you. Unless you unless you find out beforehand that you can actually stand in the hallway to get a look at the area, and the boss won't, fight won't start. Like no, that's because you get you have four seconds. You go in there. Okay, okay. I have to watch out for these two dogs. I'm trying to get a scan. Okay, do I have to go up these stairs? Okay, that's probably what I got to do. You know, you have to. You have so little time to actually figure shit out. Ted, you and literally like, just moved to the right. That's that. That's, that is the fight. You literally just moved to the right, so you dodge, just jump, and then kill the dog in one hit. Like that's it. That's 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 the entire fight. You were the biggest idiot. Like you thought so hard. You're like, man, this is the deepest, hardest mechanic in this game. How do I figure Capra out this Demon puzzle? Capra is a fucking terribly designed boss fight because you have four. As soon as you enter, you immediately die. You're not given any time to actually figure out what the fuck's happening until you get to that boss several times. Which, as I was trying to say this entire fucking time, Alex, at, back to my original fucking point, the only way outside, because if I'm playing only the game, say I'm living in the woods and I'm playing Darkest Dungeon, I'm not having, I don't have access to a third, I don't have access to Darkest Dungeon Wiki. I'm playing the game as it's intended to be played, using the resources that the game gives me. There is absolutely no way I could, I could have, like, anticipated, oh, I can only attack this boss with far range characters because it's literally useless to attack the pot because there's no like technique I can know of like, okay, okay. All my dudes died. All right. Time to, uh, time to go and then get, so get four new ants, put them through the dungeon six times in a row. Sure. Hope no one crit kills them. Keep doing that. Uh, three hours from now, I will have them at the same level as my previous guys. And I can try this. I can try this boss fight again. Yes. The game robbed you of, of, of six hours. That's why I uninstall. I'm like, this is going to be every boss fight. Because I had a previous boss fight that literally was not my fault. And I'll get to that one in just a second. But, like, I, 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 got, I, got, I get to the boss fight and I'm like, okay, this is, this is going to be every boss in this game. They're going to have something that I literally have no ability to, uh, to, like, anticipate. Unless I go all the way through the dungeon, run away... And, like, get, okay, glad I wasted, like, 4,000 coins on all these torches and food and potentially lost all my dudes just to find out, okay, okay, this person's got a cauldron, so I have to leave, take a huge stress penalty, go through all this stuff, okay, well, my four main dudes are all stressed out now, let me put them in here, let me spend a bunch of gold to that, okay, I've got 5,000 gold left, time to go to grind some more. It's The game is grinding and using the fucking Darkest Dungeon Wikia to actually do any of the fucking boss fights. It's fucking garbage. Now, I actually have to tell you something uh, of a game design you actually didn't understand. The game did teach you the mechanics of that fight. You're not supposed to know it beforehand or during the fight. You're supposed to die and learn it from your death and then try again six hours later with a new party. That's the point. Exactly. And that's what, what Dark Souls fuck? does. In Dark Souls, you don't come into the fight and like, and you don't solve the four-second puzzle of Capra Demon immediately. You get killed by him and the dogs. So you think, okay, the Capra Demon has two dogs in there. Let's try that again now that I know there are two dogs. In Dark Souls, so you go in there, you have your four seconds to figure out the boss fight before you're fucked. Okay, it takes two minutes to get back there, and then you piece together. For the for this boss fight in Darkest Dungeon, I would have to die or run away and have to do a whole bunch of grinding and bullshit to get back and get a second try at it. Like, it's Capra Demon if there was a three-hour buffer between times that you could attempt to fight him. Now, the fucking thing that I really hate about Darkest Dungeon, and if you thought dying to the witch and having to play for another couple hours was bad, you haven't heard the stories of how the actual uh, Darkest Dungeon itself is like. So, Ted, let me tell you a little story. Well, hold on. No, let me do this first, because I'm not going right. to get a chance to talk about the the swine prince. Whoops. So, okay, the first one, bo- or second boss, because the first one was a necromancer that I just unga bungaed. I don't know if he had a gimmick. I just hit him really, really hard and crit him three times. I don't know what he Sounds did. Sounds about right. But, so, uh, the swine prince, I go in there, I've got a pretty solid party. They're not, just because it was a hard fight to get there, I've got my tank in the front, he's got 100% HP. Uh... Everyone else has got, like, I think the lowest person had was a dude in the third spot who was, like, my highway man or my hound master who had 50% HP or something. And then, like, that was the lowest one. Everyone else was 75%, 85%, or 100%. So I go into the Swine Prince. It's like, all right, let's do this. Swine Prince does, like, meat cleaver. Hits all four characters. Crit, crit, not crit, crit. They're all stunned. Wilbur kills someone. He does the meat thing again. 
crit crit kills kills every single person is put on death's door uh two of them die wilbur or yeah wilbur hits one who's like a little dude in the background kills it uh one of them has a heart attack and then i'm left with two characters and this is before i've even gotten a single action i have dr pat normstrom who's a renamed plague doctor and then i had my hound master Dr. Patton stabs the Houndmaster and he dies because he's irrational now because he just saw everyone get crit three times and died. And then that's it. Before I had a single turn to myself, I'm down to one character and both of the bosses are still at full health because he crit, stunned everyone, and then hit everyone again. And there's literally nothing yeah, I could it's do. It's like you need to get good. There was actually literally nothing I could do. Ted, get good. And it was it was it was the ability that like oh now I have to I have to look on the wiki before every single boss fight that made me stop because like even that I'd be like, okay you know I you know I'll just go through it again I got bad RNG like I would rather prefer a game just have horrendous RNG than force me to use a fucking Wikipedia to play the game. Hey, Darkest Dungeon has both of those things. Let me say my piece. Trust me. Okay, so before I get into the Darkest Dungeon itself, I want to explain one more thing that I hated gameplay wise, uh, game design wise of this game. The oh, God damn, my spit chair. The overabundance of RNG in this game uh, sickens me. Now, I don't mean crits and getting killed in the first turn like him. I mean how legitimately every single thing in this game is based on a random calculation. From the damage numbers, from getting, you know, turn order swapped to the town itself, at, like to the debuffs and, and or buffs you get from uh, or the perks and the, the quirks, good or bad that you get, like narcissistic or kleptomaniac or courageous or whatever, to uh, the dungeon layouts, to the party members you get. You get Chuckles the Jester, like I keep mentioning. He'll have like a green and black color, and he'll have like three different skills from your last one, but you can just buy, you know, you can rename him and buy the other skills anyway. But like, you go into these random generated dungeons with this mission that's picked out of three, which isn't isn't that much of uh, RNG. Uh, it's your RNG fights with your RNG ability uh, ability damage outputs because it, it's like wow, where it's a damage between like two set numbers and it's anywhere in between. Like for for, for so you'll do from anywhere from one to ten damage. Like look at the fucking occultist heal; it'll either heal you one, ten, or just straight up bleed you. The the actual fucking uh, spin the wheel ability. You will get your RNG party members and your RNG dungeons and your RNG damage with your RNG missions to your RNG this, that, that, that. That there's nothing actually designed in this game. They there's a few did things the that have a limiter. Like, dungeons aren't going to go above a certain amount. But there's shit like, okay, right before I went and lost to the, to the witch, I had a run right before that. Every single person, like, not a single one of them went over 30 stress. And you have a maximum of 200. Once you hit 100, your dudes go like, whoa, hey. They get like a, they either get virtuous or they get super stressed out, you know, but OK, not a single one went over 30 stress. I finished it. Three of them got like super bad debuffs like, oh, this one's afraid of beasts. This one's got claustrophobia. This one's kleptomaniac. And it's like, well, what the fuck am I doing? Literally everything went correct. I got six crits as the fucking occultist like no one. There was not. They got hit maybe twice. Why is everyone getting these massive negative debuffs? Like, I've had things where you're like, okay, so the game, you can't be one shot entirely. You can get down to zero HP and you're at death's door. And then you have, like, hits after that will decide, you know, you'll, you'll be hit RNG. and then it'll decide. It'll, 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 it will RNG if you die from that or not. Like, I've had, I had games. I had runs where a lot of people got to death's door because I was at the point where I'm like, I don't have enough money to afford torches because I have to keep upgrading and taking the stress off these characters. So I'm just going to run them in here with no torches, get until as far as I can, then run away. Like, and so everyone's at death's door, they leave, and they get, like, all these positive debuffs. And it's like, it's just, just completely, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? All right, Ted, it's, I think it's time. Now, I kept to... No, I have one these... more thing to complain. Oh, I have... man. Yeah, gee, I, I gave you a list. <laughs> I have a list, too. So here's the thing. All right, one... Okay, so so the grind. There's the biggest grind in the fucking game is okay, so you have your hamlet where you have your guild and you have your your abbey, you have your stress relievers, you have all that bullshit, right? And to upgrade those to actually be worthwhile, you have to get heirlooms. And those heirlooms are like every one of them I think takes like a a family crest and then some other thing, like they need a helmet or they they need like a statue or a painting or a some other dumb thing. And the cost for those are fucking insane. Like, I was playing on normal. 
Like, I was playing on, there's Virtuous, Darkest, and then Stygian and, or Blood Moon, depending on if you bought the DLC or something. And, like, I, like, I got a job. Like, I'm 23 years old. I work a full-time fucking job. I am not going, I do not have the time to grind several hours a day with party members I know aren't going to survive so that I can save up the money and the items to just fucking upgrade these buildings so I can actually play the game. It's the same shit like Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy was a platformer similar to this one. You know, it was the gimmick was everyone is like you know your 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 descendants and they have different things. Like you'll have people who your descendants who decide one of them decides to be like a like a cleric. One of them decides to be a ninja. You know, one of them des- decides to be a miner. You know, they have like like oh this one's got irritable bowel syndrome. This one is a dwarf. This one's got gigantism. You know, shit like that. You know, that was their little RNG bullshit. But like. Uh, the fucking like okay okay the antiquarian is a class in this game that from everything i could tell was like it was supposed to be like the okay take this character on your quest that's low level so you can you know you her her gimmick is when you camp out she can create trinkets which sell for like a lot of money because they're like little quibble items you get as rare drops and like so you take them into quest you get and then you sell all the you, you know you get to camp you spend the entire camp making trinkets and items, and then you fucking leave the dungeon. Everyone gets a ton of stress. You have to send them to the fucking to the fucking abbey or the goddamn bar to get unstressed out so you can fucking use them in the future. And it's just constant grind. Because it's like you said before, as soon as one of your one of your level four ants dies, well, guess I gotta train my level one ant back up, go on all these useless quests to get the stuff. Oh man, I still gotta I gotta go on a few more quests so I can upgrade my armory so I can actually give them weapons and fucking shields. Up oh, now, time to get the gold to give them weapons and shields and upgrade their skill. It's a it's a See, constant grind with the end game of being able to grind more in the darkest dungeon. You see, here's the thing, actually. Fucking uh, the game when you die when a character dies, you don't say, "Oh man, not Chuckles the Jester." You say, "Well, there goes four hours of my life for nothing." <laughs> it robs you. But here's the actual thing: you can't grind in the darkest dungeon, Tad. Did you think there was a game behind this? Let me tell you how the darkest dungeon works. It's like, and I'm talking the darkest dungeon is what the last dungeon is called in the game. Now. When they go in here, this place is, like, fleshy, walled, evil, Cthulhu everywhere. Like, it, like this is the deepest part. Oh, God, what have we, like, stumbled upon, right? This is, like, Madness Incarnate. Now, yeah. there are, you know, multiple... You know how you go into, like, the wheels is, like, four things, and there's the final, like, boss one, you know? You have to go through, like, a bunch of missions. Same goes for the Darkest Dungeon. There's, there's like, four missions and then, like, a final one. So, when you complete a mission in the Darkest Dungeon, your char- your four party members will be so traumatized they refuse to go back into the Darkest Dungeon. Which means you need to get a full, fresh new party to go to the second level of the Darkest Dungeon. Then a full, new, what? fresh party for the third level. Then a full, new, fresh party for the fourth level. And then a full, new, fresh party for the final boss. Are you fucking it's- me? No, I'm not. It, it, that 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 is how many ants you need to be fully leveled up and geared up. And remember, if one dies, that's you know because those, these are be higher level guys. That'll be about six good hours that you need to train them. And remember, you can't send higher level guys down to the lower levels because they're too pompous now to train those new ants. The new ants have to level up themselves, or you can be suicidal and put the lower level ants with the higher level ants in the in like not the darkest dungeon, but the one before the darkest dungeon to grind them up too. It's a losing battle. The game legitimately does not allow you to play around its mechanics and actually enjoy yourself. And I was trying to talk about this. On the easy mode, that actually is allowed. You can send characters on quests that are like like two or three levels below their thing, but only on the easiest difficulty. (laughs) Well, hey. (laughs) Well, there you go. No, that's obviously not how you're going to be playing the game, unless you're a fucking loser. (laughs) Even I played the game on fucking uh, the difficulty they originally wanted me to, you know? And I just couldn't stand it. But anyway, so the Darkest Dungeon itself encompasses every single flaw with the game in one go. The game, as uh, one reviewer mentioned, I forget his name off the top of my head, but he was really in-depth with it, said, The game is so in love with its grind, despite it being one of its worst features. <laughs> like, so you need, what, what is that, like 12? No, no, yeah, you need to have like 12 or fucking 16 fully leveled up and geared up party members to actually complete the Darkest Dungeon. And that's a lot of time. 
That's a lot of time that you got to spend not having fun so that you can beat the game. Because the thing about and this remember, game is fun. Every time you're out, every time, every single one of these characters can die very, very. Like when I went to the Swine Prince, crit, everyone's stunned. Hit everyone over again. Death's door has a heart attack through RNG. They went in. They didn't go in there weak. They went in there as healthy as they could have possibly been in the circumstances, which was like pretty good. They had maybe fifteen stress, and then the lowest one had fifty percent HP. But like, you know, they weren't gonna die. You know, they had like a good thirty health. Oh shit! Never mind. Like you can easily die at like any point, and then like okay, so let's say you're put into a situation where you know your character is going to die. You know, you're like, oh shit, okay, everything's going to hell. Let me attempt to run away. If the RNG is correct, it lets me get away and not waste my turn. I, they get super stressed out. You have to send them to the thing. They have to rejuvenate. They get a bunch of negative debuffs from leaving the dungeon, and you lose a fuckload of money. And oh, by the way, when all my characters died against that boss, I had, I was okay, first thing went through my mind. Oh, that sucked. Okay, at least I'll be able to keep all this really expensive gold, so I'll be able to get all my stuff going right again, because I had like, Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of shit. <laughs> nope, you lose every single shred of gold if your character, if your party is wiped, you get nothing. Yeah, it's it's the worst. Nothing about that game is actually well designed or well made. The game's entire thing is like its selling point is we're really hardcore and not fun. If you beat this game, congratulations, you're now validated in your hobby. Aren't you cool? Like, you're not a waste of time. Look at you. You beat Darkest Dungeon. Aren't you just awesome? Thumbs up, my dude. You did it, champ. Oh, right. I forgot to tell you. So, after all of that, that, that shit in the Darkest Dungeon is done, all of that bullshit that even you couldn't believe was real, here's the ending. I'm going to spoil the ending so no one has to actually suffer. And, Tad, since you want to install the game, I assume you don't care that I'm going to spoil the game? I could not give less of a fuck about this game. Okay, so you go to the very last dungeon, you beat the fucking boss, which is like an evil heart. The game, the narrator is like, and that's the story of the darkest dungeon. Turns out everything you did was absolutely useless because evil exists everywhere. The planet explodes, resets, and the town's back to like being shitty, and it all begins again. And then, and then you play the game over again. Oh, no, I'm mean, actually that's no, nah, that makes sense. It's cycle based. Like, nah- that, uh, like, that makes sense for, like, the feel that the game was going towards. Like, yeah, you did all this shit, but, like, it doesn't matter. Like, that's a, that's Lovecraft. Like, that's actually pretty in line with, uh, yeah, but with how I would me... expect it. Yeah, but, Ted, after I went through, say, losing my guys in the Darkest Dungeon and having to go get, uh, you know, 20 more ants all geared up, when I have 80 hours in this game, and I finally beat the game, and it says, well, congratulations, fucko, none of that mattered. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you too. Nothing about this no, game is like, fun. I'm, I, I disagree on that. That makes oh 100% my God. perfect sense. That No, like, no joke. Like, that's actually Lovecraft. Like, the whole point of Lovecraft stuff was like, you know, like, you have, like, these big eldritch, like, between, between like, world things that could not give less of a fuck about you. His whole fit, his whole gimmick was how insignificant you are in the grand scheme of things. And that... Like, no, I'm 100% okay with that as the end. Yeah, but the thing is, is that when it's, it's a fucking video game, it should be rewarding to finally fucking win, but it's never rewarding. Even Bloodborne being Lovecraft as fuck felt rewarding when I turned into a squid baby because, look, I transcended fucking humanity now. There was an ending. <laughs> there, there were three endings to that game. All of them concluded the fucking game and made me go like, well... That's finally over. And in fact, they even give you a special thing. If you pick the fucking ending where German kills you, uh, you will have a tombstone in New Game Plus that the doll will sit by. Oh, neat. Cause it, so, like, like, look at that. That's a cool little feature. Wish Darkest Dungeon gave me some kind of, you know, reward or, like, made me feel good about anything, but it doesn't. It's not a fucking video game. It's just a fucking, like, waste of your time. If you are just, like... I don't know, a fucking loser who needs to validate his existence by playing games that are, like, hard so that he can feel good about himself. You know, like, you go to V and you're an absolute fucking loser. Then go ahead, play this fucking game. But it's not fun in the slightest to me. Nothing about it is fun. I don't want to grind up my ants to grind up more ants. I already played enough Warframe to know how that feels like, alright? I don't give a shit about that. I don't like that nothing in the game is actually designed from a design standpoint. It's all thrown into a fucking machine, a little slot machine, and said, Yep, there's our game, we're done now. It's lazy as fuck. The Darkest Dungeon itself is a poorly designed mess of garbage, and I fucking hate it. I didn't play it, 
but I can feel the pain from everything that I have researched. I've been, I when I hate something, I go into it really hard. Because I had to prove my friend that he was an idiot. Because here's what pisses me off the most about Darkest Dungeon. About everything about it. The people that defend it never defend any of its design choices. They just say, and you did this too, motherfucker. Oh, you're just bad and got RNG'd. Or, oh, you just didn't understand the game mechanics. Oh, you ate food in one room, went to the next and got a hunger strike and died? Well, you just got need to get good. That's not the game's fault for not having a hunger system <laughs> despite having a random hunger check. No, 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 no. That's your fault. See, you don't understand. Everything in this game is absolutely perfect, and you just weren't good, good enough at it. Because that's what that fucker Alba, I'm calling you out again, did when I would bring up my actual fucking points, and I'm this mad about it, I would say, <laughs> man, from a design standpoint, X and Y are really shit. I'm not going to repeat myself because I just went on for like 40 fucking minutes about it. And he's just like, <clears throat> literally snorting at me, <laughs> legitimately, <laughs> going like, <clears throat> well, sounds like someone's just bad. I wanted, like, I just, I wouldn't care if a gun just, like, like a random, like, person broke into his house and just killed him. I'm like, yeah, okay, fuck you too. Like, go so kill So what you're yourself. saying, Alex, is you would be okay if he just had RNG kill him. No, if he just ate some food, went like opened his door to go take a piss, and dropped down dead from a hunger, from a hunger check right there, I wouldn't care. <laughs> if if he was hanging out with his family and they're like, "Hey, you want some corn, Alba?" And he'll be like, "Oh!" and just have a heart attack and die because this game's shit. <laughs> I'm sure you've all shit. seen that video. Don't buy Darkest Dungeon unless you want to buy it for like five bucks. Because I okay, I had a fun like five and a half hours. Or no, I had a fun like twelve hours, and then I hit the last hour and a half. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, never mind. I was having fun incorrectly. Yeah. Anyway, this game sucks. The, the design behind it sucks. The people who defend it by saying people who suck at it are just bad suck. This game made me dazed. It made me real, and it broke me. This episode recorded and planned within like I don't know what. This is forty eight minutes, about an hour and a half ago. Because fuck this fucking game. Fuck this, fuck this fucking game. Fucking RNG bull, literally RNG bullshit. Anyway, uh, you can find the podcast on Twitter at Let Me Tell You PD. You can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, uh, maybe Stitcher. I don't know. I looked at it and it actually seems kind of sketchy. So maybe I won't but put it on there. But you will not find us playing Darkest Dungeon. Exactly. And uh, like Alex uh, said earlier, I'll put the little, uh, I'll link the VO, the two and a half hour long VOD if you want to watch that. But uh, I'll link the, um, y- if you look really closely in the uh, Twitch clip, you can see the moment my soul breaks. But I also want to give a shout out to uh, to the Patreon people and the Discord people. Because every now and then, like, I'll get home after like a long eight hours at work. And then like, I'll connect my phone to my Wi-Fi and she bloop, 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 bloop. And it's had like a bunch of really cool emails and stuff like that. And it's nice to see. It's pretty great. Uh, anyway, that'll do it for this episode. So uh, we will see you guys next week.